I will be reading a monologue out of Good Masters, Sweet Ladies, Voices from a Medieval Village. Nellie the Sniggler. I was born lucky. Nay, not born lucky, as you shall hear, but soon after, and ever after. My father and mother were starving poor, and dreaded another mouth to feed. When my father saw I was a girl child, he took me up to drown me in a bucket of water. But here's the lucky part. I took hold with my wee fingers and held on to the inside of the bucket. And my mother wept and my father's heart went soft. And he could no more drown me than him himself. And they named me Nellie, for Queen Eleanor. And their luck changed. First my uncle died of scurvy and we got his pigs. Then the nuns of the abbey hired us to catch eels, and we've been sniggling ever since. Do you see these eels? Fresher than the day where they were born, and fat as priests. I know where their burrows are, and I know what they like for bait. And as for frogs, I've been catching frogs since I was two years old, and not a frog in Chinsdom jumps fast enough to get away from me. I can swim as fast as any boy, and better than Drogo the tanner. Do you know Drogo? The tanner's apprentice. I can't point him out to you because he'd see me. He's always staring at me. Many's the time I've seen him peel off his hose to show me his legs. As if every frog I've ever put into a pie didn't have better legs than his. He had a brawl last summer. I twas the fault of the tanner and the river stanks. He said twas the fishmongers, which is pure folly, Tis surely God's will that fish should rot up in the water, but the beast should rot on the land. I put out my tongue, and by St. Peter he pushed me right off the wharf into the water. And then, poor fool, he thought I would drown. I, who couldn't drown when I was three hours old. He splashed in after me and dove down deep and grabbed his foot, and I dunked him three times and served him right. Only when I had to drag him out of the water, because it turns out he can't swim. I suppose you could say I saved his life, after all. He's never forgotten it. He watches me all the time and shows off his legs. But I don't speak to him. I want nothing to do with him and his legs. I pretend I don't even know his name. And every day I walk past the tannery just so he can see me not looking his way.